Hey everyone, Benny here, and in this video, continuing our quest to conquer memory, we will have the final iteration of memory development for the time being, and this time we're adding read-only memory. So, I think it's just best to just go straight into building this and explain later. But, so basically what happens is first, you have things going like this, Four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four. It's only going over the reading bus because, again, read only. And exact same thing backwards. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And eventually I'm going to fill all the space in, but first I'm going to separate them all out just to mostly for clarification's sake. This is why right he this thing right here is going to do absolutely nothing except clarify the border of the various bits of read-only information. So let's just fill this in, and I'm probably going to show you how to do part of this and just do the rest off camera because this could take a fairly significant while to do. But okay. Okay, I guess I'll just start with this one. Well, you know, this actually is a simple video, so I might... It's going to be a short video in general, so I'm probably just going to go ahead and do this on camera. So basically just fill all of them in. Nothing too spectacularly hard here. And... Just keep adding memory... Well, not entirely memory yet, but we'll make it memory. And in case you didn't know, read-only memory does not use D flip flops because we don't need to write to it. Okay, now we of course need the obligatory redstone wire on all of these. And don't worry, we're almost to the point where we can pretty much just be done with this. this is, we're actually almost done already. Read-only memory is really nice because I it, it mean it's nice because it's easy, but it's also not nice because I mean it's so easy. It's almost like why can't it just be automatic? It's unfortunately one of the few things that's not automatic, which is very unfortunate. So almost done. Last row. So come on. And okay. So these four sets are gonna be our four sets of read-only memory. And now what we want to do is remember this is number one, so we're going to place torches. We're gonna start by going like this. So start by placing a torch here. And you basically every time it's in front of a green row, just place a torch. You should have to place it a total of two four times, excuse me. And then other than that, you are basically just placing torches like in the same diagonal pattern that you did several times before. So just make sure they're over the wires and add them. And okay, finally, we just need the reading command. And oh yeah, I'll do it in my head wall. So just go all the way back, fill this with redstone. I know this wasn't the most exciting video, I'm sorry. And fill with redstone. Now we're just about done. Just break it above every single green block. And of course we'll need the torches, because this is our reading thing. Same rules apply. Torch, 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 torch all the way down the line. Okay, that's read-only memory finished. So now, if my frame rate stops lagging horrendously for some reason, I can finally sort of explain this. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to have levers on the side of this, and not on the side of this. What this is going to do is we're going to be able to have set up our own values that we put in manually for here. And then we'll be able to read that at any time like this. So, you know, first I'm going to label in binary because 
well, not three, four, and eight. Just because it's going to make this a whole lot easier to interpret later. Because binary can, it's one of those things where it can be written left to right or right to left. It's just one of those weird numbering systems that's kind of like that. And I'm numbering it backwards, aren't I? Ah. Uh, sometimes I am marveled by my own brilliance, but ho hopefully you get the idea. So really, this is just places for us to put in some value that we might need for some reason. It could really depend. It's really one of the things that's more useful in software than hardware. It's Hardware use is not very much. You can build a full computer without this. It's not very important. But it's basically just a good place for you can say, okay, read from ROM 1 or read from ROM 2 and just get information out that you might need for some reason. So this won't be our user input. We'll have a separate user input panel. User input will work very similarly, unsurprisingly, but so this is basically ROM. It's our third and final form of memory. I technically, are not, technically not our final because we will add program memory a little bit later. But yeah, this was read-only memory. And oh yeah, just to prove it works, if I wanted to put in like ten, and oh, I will have to move these back a bit. I think I'll do that off camera so that this is an issue. But if I read it. You notice that everything is lit up, even though this is wrong. Hmm. But that's okay, because we can fix it. So we need to go out one more, unfortunately. And I might just cut off the video, because this is something you probably understand. So, 8, 2, read, I get just that one. Oh right, I need to put log it into these into an inverter. I'm sorry. So they all so right now we'll just read all ones. I hope theoretically mostly ones anyways. J is and the reason it's still reading that is because of that thing. But yeah, that's basically how this works. I'm so basically you'll need t I'm sorry, my example failed, but there's a good reason for that. You will need inverters basically like this. So this will be an inverter and you'll have the torch, excuse me, the, the repeater here. So set it off like that. I'm not going to do it because you understand it already. And thank you. See you in the next video.